pulleys are cool because uh, uh, they help you like lift stuff. They help you change directions of of your um, I guess I don't know effort force. Um, if you're like on the ground here and you have a pulley way up here, then you can pull from the ground. So you can pull here and it pulls this up. It changes. It. You don't have to be way up here to pull. Um, you just have to have a pulley there. So that's what pulleys are used for. It's like in cranes or in lifts. Um, yeah. Let's, let's continue. Uh, ideal mechanical advantage for pulleys. There are a couple different types of pulleys. Uh, fixed pulleys, which are are uh, stuck to a surface. Usually we denote that with like uh, that sort of symbol. If it's fixed, it means this is like attached to a ceiling or a wall or something like that. Um, it's not going to move. A movable pulley, like if I were to pull on this string, this pulley could go up or down. Um, because it's only attached to the load, it's not attached to a fixed point. Um, so those are the differences there. A fixed pulley always has an IMA of one, an ideal mechanical advantage of one. Uh, it fe so like if I pull on this and I'm lifting 10 pounds and I'm ignoring the weight of the rope and the, the friction, remember it's ideal. Um, if I'm trying to lift 10 pounds and I use a fixed pulley, it's going to feel like I'm lifting 10 pounds. That, that's what the I, IMA of 1 means. It's used just to change the direction of the force. A movable pulley has an IMA of 2, so it makes it feel, it makes it feel easier, right? Because if you have an ideal mechanical advantage greater than 1, it makes it feel easier. So, uh, it's a second class. Well, okay. Uh, so if I were trying to lift a 10-pound object, and I'm, like, standing up here, like, look at this, me. Uh, if I'm standing up there, and I guess I'm lifting it with my teeth, uh, I would pull up on this, and I would feel five pounds of force. Um, on the other side, there's five pounds of force in, like, the tension, uh, but it, it feels easier. Like, it's just half as, half as hard. So we have an ideal mechanical advantage of two for movable pulleys. That's the rule for that. Let's move on. Where's, oh. Here's a term uh, that's used in your in your practice problems, your homework, uh, and it's called block and tackle system. If, it, if a combination of pulleys are used, um, it's called a block and tackle system. Uh, yeah, uh, the way you can calculate the ideal mechanical advantage of a block and tackle system. So this is this is important when you whenever you have a block and tackle system, uh, you can use this rule. Um, only if a single rope is 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 threaded through it. So if 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 you have different mul multiple ropes, this rule doesn't work. Um, you have to have a single rope going through all the pulleys. And the 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 way you calculate the ideal mechanical advantage is by counting the number of strands opposing the force. Well, I, instead of opposing, I like to say supporting. So let's see what I mean by that. Uh, here we have the the tension or the uh, the effort line, I guess we would call it. Uh, that's that's what we're pulling on. We're trying to lift this uh, this motorcycle, so we're pulling on this. This is our effort strand. The other strands, this that's one, two, three, and four. Those are used to support the load. This one's we're going to consider not used to support the load because we're we're pulling on it. We're it's the effort strand. If I if I were pulling on it in the other direction though, I would be supporting the load. I it's like something I the way I think of it is uh the strands that like hold up the hold up the the object. So if we were to use that rule, uh the ideal mechanical advantage of this block and tackle system would be the number of strands supporting the load. So that's one, two, three, four. We don't count this one because we're we're pulling on it. It I can like it's not holding up the bike. It's it's we're we're using it to, to lift the bike. So that's the effort strand. So here uh it would be four. What about if you use uh a couple different uh simple machines? What what do you, what do you do? Uh if one simple machine is used after another the mechanical advantage is multiply. So you just get the mechanical advantage of each individual thing and you multiply them together. 
that's what we're going to see on the next page. Um, the total mechanical advantage is just the mechanical advantage multiplied together. Uh, so, for this here, we have a pulley, and it's a movable pulley, so this that's fixed there, but this pulley is going to move up and down uh, if you pull on the effort there. And then we also have a lever here. So we're just going to get the mechanical advantages of both of those things and multiply them together. So if we were trying to calculate the uh, total mechanical advantage of this, we'd have to take the number of strands, right, for the, the pulley. And this is a movable pulley. Um, so we already know that the mechanical advantage is 2. But you can another way of thinking of it is how many strands support the load. Well, this strand and this strand, even though this is the, the effort strand, it's also now supporting the load. I hope Hopefully you can see that. Um, so the number of strands here would be 12. Uh, and then, so that's the ideal mechanical, sorry, no, 2, 2, not 12. And we're going to multiply it by the ideal mechanical advantage of the lever. And that is just the distance of the effort force to the fulcrum divided by the distance of the resistance force to the fulcrum. So uh, with DE, de E, the effort, uh, that would be from here to here, right? That's 12 feet. And we're dividing that by the distance from the load to the fulcrum, which would be 4 feet. And if we simplified all that out, 12 divided by 4 is 3, times 2 is 6. So the total mechanical advantage would be 6 here. You just multiply them together. That's what we're going to see on the next one. Pulleys in combination. I mean, these are still simple machines used all together. So the total IMA, the total ideal mechanical advantage, is just what you get when you multiply the mechanical advantages together. There's two ways you can do this. First, hopefully you could tell, these are all movable pulleys. We can't we can't calculate the uh, the IMA of this system. It's not a block and tackle system uh, because it's not connected through one strand. Um, these are these are m multiple strands. They all like attach at a different point. So we can't just we can't just count the strands opposing the load. However, what we can do is know that this is a mechanical advantage or an ideal mechanical advantage of two, of two, of two, because we already said that movable pulleys have an ideal mechanical advantage of two. So I am a total totes. Uh, that's just going to be two times two times two. Remember, if they're used in combination, you just multiply. So an ideal here we have an ideal mechanical advantage of eight. And that means if we're trying to lift this 80 pound uh, force, and we're we're standing up here, it's gonna feel like we're only lifting 10 pounds, right? Because it's an ideal mechanical advantage of eight, ideally. So actual mechanical advantage still calculated the same way: the force of the resistance divided by the force of the effort. This means you have to perform the experiment. What is the uh, actual mechanical advantage of the system on the right? Well, the force of the effort is uh, 230 pounds. And the force of the, the, the resistance, the resistance, is 800 pounds. So we just divide those. And there we go. Remember, if we want to calculate the, the percent efficiency, we'd have to take the ideal mechanical advantage uh, divided by or sorry, the actual mechanical advantage divided by the ideal mechanical advantage. This video is going to be long. So, what does that mean? That means we would have to take, uh, well, what is the ideal mechanical advantage? So, IMA, remember this is connected through one strand. This is exactly like the block and tackle system uh, that we had before. Uh, and so we could just count the, we could just count the number of strands supporting the load. This strand here is not supporting the load. That's our effort strand. The other ones, though, one, two, three, four. This has an ideal mechanical advantage of four, um, and the actual mechanical advantage is less. That's good. But we could also count by multiplying, right? We have two 
movable uh, pulleys. Those both have an ideal mechanical advantage of two. And then we have two fixed pulleys, because this is like fixed uh, to the ceiling, which have mechanical advantages of one. So if you do two times two times one times one, you still get four. So to get percent efficiency, we can do uh, that would be actual 3.48 divided by 4 times 100. Uh, that would give us about 87% efficiency. Okay, cool. A common misconception is that angles don't matter. So if you're pulling stuff at an angle, you'd have to use trigonometry to figure out some, some angles. So this is wrong. Uh, angles do matter. This one you can calculate just straight up. Uh, the other one, you can't. So, be careful with the angles. Uh, we'll get into using this stuff once we get more into the physics with, with like free body diagrams and such. So, But that's, that's not going to happen in the homework right now. Uh, the last slide is this one, common misconception. Uh, count the effort strand if it pulls up. Um, that's We don't really need to think about that. What I really just think of because the it gets kind of confusing to count strands if you have a bunch of movable pulleys. So I would just say, oh, if it's movable, we already know that the IMA is 2. Um, so, so we're good there. So the ideal mechanical advantage of this system would be 2. So you can just use the, the movable slash fixed pulley rule. That's if you're confused. Um, yeah, cool.